Let's first pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Deo Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Tsung Kong, the Zhong Rinpoche. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar of the Seattle Lijang Temple. Homage to the main deity of the group practice tonight. Guru Padma Sambhava, Guru Rinpoche. Sumu, Gansen Katsu, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, all disciples present here and over the internet. And our participating VIPs today are Dr. Ryan Zhuang, and Dr. Su Lin, and Dr. Li. And the PR director of the True Buddha Seattle Temple, Mr. Fermi Wang. Good evening, everyone. How do you do? Today, we practiced Guru Padmasambhava's Dharma practice, or sadhana. And Guru Padmasambhava we can say that the start of Vajrayana or Tantrayana is from Guru Padmasambhava. So Guru Padmasambhava brought Vajrayana or Tantrayana to Tibet. So we could say that he's the first patriarch, and not only for the Nyingmapa, that the highly revered Guru Padmasambhava, actually all four sects of Tibetan Tantrayana, Nyingma, Kalukagyu, and Sakya, highly revered Guru Padmasambhava. Because Guru Padmasambhava had built the first temple in Tibet, the Samye Monastery. And King Trisong Tetjen and Santaraksita. Together with Guru Padmasambhava, the great three masters. One is the king of Tibet and the two masters together built the Samye Monastery. So he's considered the first one in Tibet. And today, because in the Deity Yoga, we often talk about the origin of the eight principal deities. 
or their spiritual journey and their experience. And we have talked about that in the past. And our group practice, practice all of the eight primary deities in turn. But uh, very few people knew about the kachanka that he holds. And what is kachanka? It's the staff with the skull cups that uh, Guru Padmasambhava is holding. And the three skulls on the kachanka represents uh, one is greed, hatred, and ignorance. So greed, anger, and delusion. And in Buddhism, we also call it as the three poisons. So any one of them will cause one to fall into hell. So why is the kachanka that Padmasambhava is holding strive through the three skulls? <coughs> it symbolizes that he had retracted all his greed, anger, and delusion. So that in Guru Padmasambhava's mind, there is no greed, anger, and delusion. So we can tell that the people in this world if an ordinary person is not a spiritual cultivator, then they would be uh, conditioned or contaminated with greed, anger, and delusion. Non-tantrika, non-spiritual cultivation, or non-sadaka do not have pure conduct, then they would be adulterated with greed, anger, and delusion. If you have desire or greed toward anything, I think all karma comes from greed. Greed is the most important one. Let me share a joke first. Someone loves beautiful woman. Is that greed? Desire? Of course, yes. There's a kind of greed. This is a joke. Someone asks, what do you see first in a beautiful woman? And some people answered, face. They would see the face first. And some people say uh, that he would see the, her waist, her slim waist. And the some the more jerk would say, look at her breasts first. And 
这样子讲。The shameless ones. And then some people say, before looking at a beautiful woman, he would have to check on his wife first if his wife is、uh, watching. So let me ask all of you. Looking at beautiful woman is not just. The monopoly of man. Even woman loves looking at beautiful woman, right? Like my mom, my mother went to mainland China. All the women on the street looked like Lin Qingxia. At that era, in mainland China, all the women on the street looked like Lin Qingxia, which is a famous actress in Taiwan. And my mom had said, not just men loves looking at beautiful women, even women loves looking at beautiful women. My mom said that. Is that greed or desire? Of course, it is considered a kind of greed. So, what should we do? Everybody loves looking at beautiful women. There is nothing wrong with it. However. If you are a spiritual cultivator and holding a chanting bead, chanting the Buddha's name, Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha, and then a beautiful woman is walking by. Namo, wow, Amitabha, so beautiful. Oh no! Amitabha is very handsome. Amitabha is very handsome and cool, but at the same time, he's also very dignified. In order to destroy or break our greed. According to my method, Grandmaster's method, because Grandmaster always speak frankly, I never lie. Grandmaster loves looking at beautiful women. I always tell the truth. But after seeing so many of them, then you find it ordinary. You don't find it anything extraordinary. After seeing so many beautiful women. You find it that it's not no big deal, and then afterwards, then you check their、um, hearts and nature. So it's not that you become、uh, horny looking at beautiful women, because you have seen so many of them. Then it's become ordinary. Then you start looking at their inner self and checking at their personality. That's how I break my own greed. I don't know how you find it. 
And some people are greedy for money and riches. Not one person is an exception. Then this kind of greed is incredible. I heard that in Min, the leader of mainland China, and he's referred as the chief secretary and also the prime minister, I suppose, or the chairman of mainland China. But there was a period that he was eradicating uh, corruption very severely. So he cleaned up all the corruptions very strictly. And I heard that he had how many corrupt officials that he had uh, prosecuted. Master Lien Yin, do you know? <laughs> what I know is from what Grandmaster says. So you're passing the ball to me. So this person is quite a jerk. You don't want to take the responsibility, do you know? Four million. Did I say? Did I say that many? So it's more accurate if you check the internet. How many that they have cleaned up? One point five seven million. person? What does it mean? One point five three million people that have been eradicated, they have been cleaned up, and, and all these corrupt officials send their money to all over the world. So all of a sudden, America also gained a lot of um, a lot of money. And all of a sudden, the economy here became so good. It turned out that the money from mainland China flowed to America. So the real estate market was really high. It's, it was so easy to sell houses. So when a house was on sale, the price kept going up, and they bid on higher prices, and they bought it on cash. And they were bought by this corrupt of officials running away from mainland China, going to all over the world. And there are lots of money around, and America too became very rich all of a sudden. I heard that there were billions or trillions of U.S. dollars <laughs> entering into the United States. So, Hui Jin, can you check the internet? 
I heard someone told me. So from this we would know you know the corrupt money is already that much the Taiwanese had the saying if you become an official in one life then you have to be reincarnated as cows for nine lifetimes. It's the same. So if you ever become a government officer in one lifetime, that you would become cows for nine lifetimes because of your greed that uh, you take money, then you would have to fall into the three lower realms. So, like Taiwan, or in Japanese, Korea, Koreans and Japanese men, uh, one sex more than Taiwanese men, because in Hawaii there was a Sakura Street uh, most of them were opened by Japanese the same in Guam and then later on the Koreans also have those businesses on Sakura Street the red light district was first opened by the Japanese and then later by the Koreans and less by Taiwanese. Although it's less in Taiwan, but they have more and more motels in Taiwan. There is no red light district in Taiwan. And even Singapore has red light district, but not in Taiwan. It's illegal in Taiwan, so they do it secretly. There's no red light district in Taiwan. Why? Because the Taiwanese uh, on the surface look very virtuous, but in reality, not so. See, because there are more and more motels now in Taiwan. Because Taiwan, Taiwanese love to present a uh, good image. I'm not saying that Taiwanese are more virtuous, they just want to present good image. And so, when the government suggested to have red light district in the cities, the citizens oppose, but instead they open lots of motels because Taiwanese just want to, to pretend to be good. Hypocrites. But in Japan or Korea, it's all open, public. So if you obsess with money or with sex, and next is your power or status. These are all considered greed. Greed for money, for sex, for power. It's extremely difficult to counter this greed.
Let me share a joke. Uh, there's a senator that after work made a phone call to his wife and asked her to get rid of or to hide all things that's made in China from, our, from their house because he wanted to bring uh, two other senators home and he wanted to show that he is patriotic and he wants to support Trump's uh, trade war with China. So when he got home with the other two senators, he discovered that his front door disappeared. <laughs> the windows also disappeared. And then inside the house, all the furniture all disappeared. The house was um, empty, completely empty. And then finally, the, the wife coming out from the bedroom totally naked because all her garments are made in China. Trump and China, why Trump wanted to get into trade war with China? Of course, I cannot tell the answer. I cannot say that I'm not Chinese. I was born in Taiwan. It's really difficult to say about Taiwan and China. The Taiwanese immigrated from China too. My grandfather came from Qianzhou of Fujian province. He immigrated to Kinmen and then moved to Penghu and then from Penghu to Jiayi, Taiwan. So my father was second generation and I am the third generation that moved to Taiwan. So if you say Taiwan is not China, that's not quite right. But if you say Taiwan is China, it's not quite right either. But all of Taiwanese or most of all Taiwanese came from mainland China. And the same with America. The earliest uh, inhabitant of America were Indians, American Indians. And all Americans came from Europe and all parts of the world like Columbus, when he discovered the new land. Actually, it's not the new land because Indians were already here. When we were little, we watched the movies, or the Western movies, there were always fightings. Have you ever watched them? And in the Western movies, there's always about Americans or American soldiers uh, at war with the American Indians. 
like the name of Seattle is actually the name of a chief in this area. So the name Seattle is the name of the chief, Indian chief. And also Tacoma is the name of an Indian chief. And we use the name of the chief to name the city. So the Americans are also immigrants and Chinese are also immigrants. So we should uh, undermine other immigrants because we are all immigrants. But there's the battle of the power and first come, first serve. So if you're here first, then you treat the late, the late comers or as the immigrants. So that's the struggle of power. So the trade wars actually, uh, the battle on power and money. So we don't want to talk about the trade war. What are they fighting for? Power and money. So that's still considered greed. So between countries, they fight for territories. Like the civil war in America, between the North and the South, what was it for? Power and money. Of course, for the people too. But it's because of money and power. It's all the same. And the Korean War between the North and South Korea also for the power and money. So the Korean War or the Vietnam War too between North and South Vietnam. They're all about power and money. And the trade war too is about power and money now. Only for the true sage, everybody else cannot run away for, from power, money, and sex. And that's greed, anger, and delusion. And your anger and hatred can create wars. And delusion includes all sorts of ignorance. And the greatest ignorance is that everything is gone once a person dies. This was what the Buddha said in Buddhism. The greatest ignorance is that when one thinks that everything is gone when one dies, because Buddhism talks about cause and effect and also karmic transgressions and retributions. So whatever you have done in this life will create what you will be in the future life. So the kachanka that Guru Padmasambhava holds in his arm symbolizes that he had destroyed greed, anger, and delusion. Like for Grandmaster, about money, Grandmaster has always abided by this precept that in his Dharma work, Dharma propagation, refuge, anything, any Dharma work, Grandmaster never set a price and never asked for any money for it. The offering is always voluntary. This is a precept that I keep as a spiritual cultivator. Of course, you can get money that's supposed to be yours. However, 
if it's not supposed to be yours, if you don't deserve it, then you should not try to get it. So we should not become thieves. <laughs> and we should not become robbers. <laughs> Thieves and robber, robbers, <laughs> robbers. <laughs> Steve and Robert. <laughs> so that's how I remember it. So Steve becomes thieves. Thieves become Steve. I mean, that's how I remember it. So you should not become a thief or a robber. It's very strange that Japan has great security. And why? Because in their education, in the elementary school, they always teach to be a good citizen, that you should not take what belongs to other people. You should not become a thief. You should not rob uh, other people's money. You should not become a robber. That's why the uh, security in Japan is very good. It's very safe in Japan. That's why Japan is a good place to travel, because they really have done that this point. If you have received Japanese education in Taiwan, you would know that every morning when you get up, then you would water to spray, and you use your sweep to sweep your own yard. And also the part of the road in front of your house and you don't see garbage in Japan. But Japanese love to smoke, so the smoke, uh, the cigarette butts are not considered garbage. Because Japanese loves to smoke and drink. So cigarette butts are not considered garbage, but you have to sweep everything else. So Japanese has their own virtues. So when we were little, we also have a class on civil, civic rights and citizenship. But now it's already gone in Taiwan. So as a spiritual cultivator, we want to eradicate our greed, anger, and delusion. Uh, please put a fan here. I'm all wet already. It's, I don't, I cannot bear heat very well. Because we were talking about trade war earlier. That's why I was sweating. Because that's, that's a major problem of the world. I don't know what to say. But in reality, it was the battle about power and money. In this world, between countries, or between clans, 
or between people, or between companies, or in elections, they're all about competitions and fightings. So as the monks and nuns, we are apart from the mundane world. Each one of us should hold that kachanka and we should uh, keep in control our greed, anger and delusion, especially that anger. It's very, very difficult to find Grandmaster losing his temper, like striking the desk or pointing fingers. It's very difficult. Grandmaster does not want to lose his temper. If I really cannot bear it anymore, then I would probably say something, reprimand something. It's very rare. It's, it's extremely rare to see Grandmaster angry or losing temper or, sh or a very angry face. It's Everything is very easy, lightly, about a name and position and fame and greed. It's very, very light. So as spiritual cultivator, we should be like that. We should purify our own mind. Then that's purifying our own karma. This is very important. I was talking about the Kachanka of Guru Padmasambhava. And the first one at the top, the skull represented greed, and the second one represented anger, and the third one represented ignorance. Human beings are ignorant, extremely ignorant. Now we know the value of human lives, and you strive for the, for the value of life, and you should strive for the pure life, and strive to be reborn in the pure land, and to strive to become a sage, you have to eradicate the three poisons, greed, anger, and delusion or ignorance. Now let's continue to talk about Lamde a little bit. Maintaining extraordinary faith in the Supreme Guru the profound Guru is perfect due to the real practice with strong faith and understanding in the merciful Guru who is no different from the Vajra holder. One prays to the five-colored light screen on top of the lotus throne which is seated on top of our crown in the daytime and at the center of our hearts at night. As soon as the supreme reverence and faith arise, it is the start of the affinity of maintaining any samaya. So this talks about that we have to abide by the first precept of the 14 root downfalls precepts. So it's mentioned here, the profound guru is perfect. Your lineage root guru has walked the path of the spiritual cultivation, that he has made the journey. He has been in spiritual union with the yidam or the main deity. That he has gained fruition in his spiritual cultivation. He has personally confirmed. Lineage Guru is like this. 
that he has some fruition in this spiritual cultivation may not be all of them and may not be the ultimate fruition, but he has attained some fruition. Then that's the profound guru that is perfect. So when the guru has attained perfect an, an attainment, and a guru has entered into the profundity. So that's not just any ordinary guru or masters, because they are still cultivating. But a profound, perfect guru has been completely pure, has been in union with the yidam, and he, can, he has been to the pure land, and he has attained fruition, then he would be referred as the supreme, profound, and perfect guru. And he is a, a real cultivator, a cultivator who has truly practiced that is able to benefit sentient beings. And if you have a very strong faith towards such a guru, if you have a very strong faith toward your lineage root guru, then you view the lineage root guru as the Vajra holder, which is Vajra Sattva. So you treat your lineage root guru as Vajra Sattva. So the merciful guru and Vajra Sattva are completely the same, that he is Vajra Sattva, which is also the Vajra holder. And one prays to the five colored light screen on top of the lotus throne. So the lineage root guru is sitting amidst the five colored light and on top of the lotus throne with the mundis. The same with the Vajra holder, Vajra Sattva, seated on top of the lotus, uh, the mundis on the lotus, radiating five colored light. As the disciple, in the daytime, you should place your lineage root guru on top of your head. On top of your head, your lineage root guru is seated there. And at night, when you sleep, your lineage root guru is inside your heart. You think of your guru and place him inside your heart. And in the daytime, you place him on top of your head. That's extraordinary faith in the lineage root guru, that you have complete and strong faith in your lineage root guru. This is what it meant here. And this is abiding by the samaya, the samaya between you and the lineage root guru. So this is the meaning of this excerpt. Now you understand, it's very clear. So the respect toward your lineage root guru, because he has walked the spiritual cultivation path, and he has been in union with the Yidam, like myself, Every day, I have to be in union with my gurus. And the feeling, the spiritual experience, the joy and happiness that you experience from the spiritual union cannot be put into words. When your yidam enters into your body, when you enter into the heart of the yidam, and when the two of you are in union, that kind of spiritual feeling is beyond words, cannot be described. Mm -hmm. 
So the lineage root guru also benefiting sentient beings because he has placed the dharma milk into your clean dharma vessel, which is you. As a human being, we are like a dharma vessel, like a vessel, a container, like a glass. And when it's clean, then the dharma flow of the universe enters into this vessel or container. Then you, you would be filled with the dharma flow. The same with the lineage Sud Guru and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. When the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas enter into your heart, then you would be like being filled with the dharma flow of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Therefore, he is able to benefit all sentient beings. The first class is uh, Chinese. The teacher asked Xiaoming, what is the next verse of having money and uh, if you have no money, then you uh, succumb to your faith. And the teacher asked why the ladies of the ancient China bind their feet. And Xiaoming replied, because they don't want them to go shopping. And the teacher asked again, but how, how about now? They don't bind their feet anymore. And Xiaoming replied, because now you can buy online and uh, deliveries. That's why you don't have to bind your feet anymore. And the teacher asked Xiaoming to teach the class instead. This is another joke. A woman, an African woman, uh, tour in Xiamen and went in and stayed at a hotel. And there was a fire at night. And the African woman did not wear anything but ran out. And the fireman was very shocked. Oh my God, so scary that she's burned so bad that yet she still ran so fast. But actually, that's due to the color. Let me ask this question. What color clothes would make us look thinner? Black, right? We all know that. But someone answered. Oh, then if you walk together with people fatter than you are, then you would look skinny. Master Hui Jin often, often loves to walk with who? <laughs> oh, 
She, she's good at cooking. So standing next to her, you look much skinnier. So you would look thinner if there are heavier people around you. So in Buddhism, this is called pramana by comparison. So measurement or logic by comparison. It is part of the uh, logic studies of Buddhism. There are several uh, studies in Buddhism. One is the inner study, that's Buddhism. So when you look inside, that's called the inner sciences. And then the medical, the medical learning, and then the arts and crafts learning. So like skills, like when you uh, learn a uh, computer or building houses, those are considered as part of this learning. So the inner learning, uh, medical learning, uh, and arts and crafts learning, and then the language learning, that you understand lots of different languages. You can speak Japanese, Spanish, or French. Or Dutch. If you study this, then that's the learning of language. And then the log the learning of logic. Like the comparison that's considered logic. So in Buddhism, we talk about this Panchavidya. Don't listen to the words of a child. Why? If you are seriously listening to a child's talk, then you would lose. Is that right? Don't be too serious about a child's talk because children think their own way, they're immature. But the words of your seniors, if you're serious about it, then you would be very, that, that would be tiresome. And, but if you don't listen carefully to the words of a woman, then you would be dead. So that's the learning of logic. And talking about Lamdi or Padmasambhava, that's considered uh, the uh, inner learning or the spirituality of Buddhism. It's actually very simple. In order to study or in order to practice Buddhism, you want to live a pure life. You have to eradicate your own greed, anger or hatred, and your ignorance or delusion. You have to purify them. And in order to eradicate your greed, anger and delusion, and how do you know that you have to do so, that's due to the t 
teaching or instruction of a good guru that you have to eradicate them and you know how to eradicate them. So in Tantrayana, there are many good Dharma practices in order to eradicate your greed, anger, and delusion. And what are the reasons that we have to eradicate anger, greed, and delusion? Because those things would create karma. Therefore, we can only create good karma. We should not create bad karma. Once you accumulate resources and marriage and virtues, then you have your merits of your resources. Then you would encounter a good guru that would teach you that in the future you would be able to have attainments. That's all for tonight. Om Mani Padme Hum.